If your goal is to reduce your reliance on fossil fuels and lower or even eliminate your heating and cooling bills, then planning your heating and cooling system is your very first design decision. In my last two videos, I talked about the three essential components you'll need to incorporate to heat and cool your new home for free. In part one, I talked about capturing and controlling the heat from the sun. And in part two of this series, I explained how incorporating thermal mass into your design allows you to store heat in the very structure and design of the house. If you miss those videos, then make sure to check them out. I've placed links to part one and part two of this series in the description below this video. And you can also find them at my channel, Sustainable Home Resource, where you'll find other videos about designing, building, and living in sustainable and off-grid homes. Controlling how the sun's heat interacts with your house, storing heat in the structure of your house using thermal mass, and retaining the heat using insulation are the three essential components in a passive solar home. And these three components must be considered as you design your home, because it is the structure of the home, how it interacts with the building site and the materials it is constructed out of that is the heating and cooling system. In this video, I'm gonna focus on insulation, the third component of what I call the solar design trinity. And I'll show you how it works along with thermal mass and solar gain to heat and cool your home for free. Hey, Christina here with more tips and advice to guide you through creating an off-grid or sustainable home you'll love without the typical frustration, overwhelm, and costly mistakes. So if this is your first time here, then make sure to hit the big subscribe button and click the bell to make sure you get notified when I launch a new video. So what is insulation? We all have a pretty good idea about what insulation is. We've all seen that fluffy pink stuff that goes in the walls of our homes. But insulation is just really any material that has a lot of tiny air spaces. So we often see insulation that seems light and fluffy like feathers in a down coat or that fluffy pink stuff called fiberglass insulation. But any material that's really fluffy and has lots of tiny little air spaces is, will act as insulation. So those tiny little air spaces is what acts as a barrier for temperature to move. So what that really means is that if we've collected a lot of heat from the sun and it's in our home, the insulation will create a barrier that will keep it from escaping. And at the same time, if we have that nice warm house and the temperatures are really cold outside, the insulation will again act as a barrier to keep that temperature from coming into the house and cooling it off. Now insulation is measured in R value. So when you go to the store, you'll see it has an R value rating and the higher the R value, the more effective it will act as a barrier. So depending on how much insulation you have, meaning the higher the R value, the longer it will retain that temperature in the house. So a house left unheated, even if it's heavily insulated, will still eventually freeze or get down to very cold temperatures. The thing to keep in mind about insulation and thermal mass is that they're very different, but they work together. So thermal mass will store the heat that is collected and the insulation will act as a barrier to keep that heat from escaping the house. But unlike solar gain, insulation does not collect heat. And unlike thermal mass, it does not store heat. It can only create a barrier to retain that heat in your house. This is why it must be used along with the other two components of what I call the solar design trinity in solar gain, thermal mass, and insulation. So the way they all work together is that one, solar gain, we create a home that can capture the heat in the winter and block that outside heat during the hot summer months. Then the thermal mass can store that heat in the walls, whether we want it to store that excess heat from the summer to cool the house, or we want to store that heat in the winter of all that sunshine that we have gathered in the house that has heated up the house, then it's stored in the walls. But it would not be as effective if we do not have insulation to keep the a desired temperature of the house in the house. This is how solar gain, thermal mass, and insulation work together and eliminating any one of these three breaks the system. The tricky thing about insulation up to date has been one that it's pretty expensive. 
and two, it's been very toxic. The typical fiberglass insulations that we think of from years ago were very toxic. They contained a binder that included formaldehyde, and this formaldehyde can off-gas and create all sorts of concerning health issues. More recently, we have access to a lot more types of insulations. So when you're designing your house, I encourage you to look at many, many options for insulation and compare their cost, their toxicity, and how easily they are to install in your home. So how much insulation should you include in your home? Well, the building code will determine the minimum amount of insulation you should use. In my home, I included what the code required for me to include in my home. And because I have so much thermal mass, I feel that it works really well. But homes that don't have much thermal mass probably should be using considerably more insulation than the code is requiring. And what should you be insulating? Most of us think about insulation in the walls, but our ceilings and attics need to be insulated, the walls need to be insulated, and our floors need to be insulated. Now I have a concrete slab floor that would be very, very cold in the winter if I didn't have some insulation underneath it. The other thing that we often forget about is our windows. And it's very important in a passive solar home to have windows that are insulated. We're letting all that sun in through that clear glass, but at night when the temperature goes down, we really need to have a barrier. Now a wall might have an R value of say 22 or even more, but the best of windows that will allow the sunshine to come in during the day only have an R value of about three. That's why I advocate for not having an entire wall of glass because it will bring in so much sun during the day, it may overheat, and at night there's an extremely large amount of heat loss through all those windows. The other advice I have is that to make sure that you have some sort of insulated window blind that comes down over those windows that you can pull at night. There are many types of insulations that you can get in today's market and they are ever increasing. I'm always hearing about new, exciting, less toxic, more natural insulations. And I don't have a lot of experience personally building with those materials, but I urge for you to look into them. And I will include a list of some of the ones I've heard about down in the description down below. I have some experience with fiberglass insulation from a house I designed many, many years ago. It was a small ski cabin for my family. Now we used fiberglass insulation because that's all we knew to use, and that was the typical insulation of the time. And I can tell you from experience, it's pretty challenging to work with. Unless you're very well protected, you get all these little fiberglass pieces that can irritate your skin, you can get it into your lungs, and little did we know at the time, it contained formaldehyde. So when I decided to build Twisted Oak, I chose to use a soybean-based spray-on insulation. Now, the downside is I did have to hire somebody to do that. That is not something most people can do themselves. It takes special equipment and special knowledge. This was a more natural and less toxic version of most spray foams, and I felt very comfortable incorporating it into my home. The beautiful thing about this type of insulation is it sprays into all of the crevices and tiny little places that a bat type of insulation won't fill so you have very few air spaces where that heat can escape. The other insulation I have some personal experience with is denim. Now denim insulation is made from recycled blue jeans that they shred up and turn into this really fluffy blue insulation. And like fiberglass insulation, it comes in bats where you put it in the wall cavity. And this was much cleaner to work with, but it also has this tendency to sag over time. So you end up with these air pockets and you can get a lot of heat loss through that. Although the room that we use this in stays pretty darn comfortable. Now the nice thing is a lot of these products are becoming a lot more available even in the big box stores. You can get denim from a big box store and I even noticed in the store the other day when I was checking out the pink fiberglass insulation, it now says it is not containing any sort of formaldehyde. There are a lot more insulations available to us now, so make sure you check out a lot of different ones before you make your choice. Just for instance, there are hemp insulations that are said to be pest and mold resistant. There are sheep wool insulations. There's the denim insulations that I talked about. 
There's also rock wool, which is also pest mold resistant and fire resistant, which is super important in our homes here where we have a lot of wildfires. Let's review what we know so far. There are three essential components of house design if you want to heat and cool for free. They are the solar design trinity, solar gain, thermal mass, and insulation. And by understanding the patterns of the sun, we can control how the sun interacts with our home by placing the house on the site and designing eaves and overhangs over south-facing windows so that we can collect the heat from the sun in the winter and block it in the summer. We can build homes with materials that will store and regulate the heat that we collect. And we can use insulation as a temperature barrier to retain the warmth or the coolness in the house and keep the varying outside temperature outside. So often, all we need to do is to look to nature for the answers. We don't need to close ourselves off from the natural world and then artificially heat homes with fossil fuels to stay comfortable. I know that houses in some climates may need to have some added heating or cooling, but imagine how little fossil fuels would be needed if we designed our homes with more attention to working with nature and incorporating the heat of the sun, thermal mass, and insulation. If I can build a home that heats and cools for free, then I know you can too. Designing a home consciously and efficiently, either on the grid or off the power grid, can drastically reduce or even eliminate your heating and cooling bills and your impact on the planet. Leave me a comment and tell me what kind of insulation you're considering for your sustainable home. Please share this video with anyone you know who may be interested in building an off-grid or sustainable home. It's easy to share. Just click the share button just below this video. You can copy the link or share it directly to your favorite social media platform such as Facebook, Pinterest, or Twitter. I post a video every Saturday morning, so stay tuned for more videos on designing, planning, and building your off-grid or sustainable home.